Welcome to Total Training for Adobe Flash CS5 Professional Essentials. I'm John Olliman, and I'm here to walk you through what you need to know to start creating your own Flash animations and projects. I like to emphasize practical applications, so throughout the course of this series, we'll learn Flash basics while creating several typical Flash projects. By the time we're done, you'll have lots of techniques you can use to create and control animation, as well as know how to work with sound, video, and interactivity. Now, I know you want to get started animating right away, but there are a few things about working with Flash CS5 that we should take care of first, and that's what this chapter is all about. I want to spend some time working with the tools and the interface so that we can get a feel for the way the program works and understand how we can control all the items we're going to be animating. We're going to cover a lot of ground, but in a short time, you'll know your way around the Flash program a lot better. To get things started, let's just open up a new Flash file. You can either do it from the welcome screen here or from the File menu, New Command. I'm just going to choose Action Script 3, and it'll start up a brand new FLA file for us to work with. Right off the bat, you can see this big white area that we're going to refer to from now on as the stage, and that's where we'll be assembling all of our elements that we're going to be working with in our animation. I've got a timeline window, some tools over here on the side, and also a properties panel. Now usually the program starts up in classic mode, so if your screen's not looking the way mine is, you can reset it by just pulling down this menu and choosing classic, and it'll match. I wanted to make sure you could see our properties panel, because that's a pretty important panel as far as Flash goes. It contains a whole bunch of information about our document, including things about how we'll publish our document, and also basic properties like the frame rate, your size, and the stage background color. You can create a Flash file any size you want, and that's what I'm going to change first. I'll click on Edit right here in the Property panel, and change the height to 300 pixels. And that way our project will fit our recording format a little bit better. We'll take a closer look at these published settings later in the chapter, but for now I'd just like to make sure we know how to work these panels in general. Now if you double click on the gray bar at the top of any panel, that'll collapse it and close it, and it'll make room for other panels if you need to see them. One more double click to the same bar, and it'll open it back up again. If you see these collapsed into icon mode, you can also click to open up a panel, and these are nice because if you just click somewhere else in your application, they'll close by themselves. Also, every one of these panels is draggable, so you can rearrange the tools however you like. I can just grab a hold of the tab of any panel, and pull it on out, and reposition it. Now, any place where you see one of those little blue bars, that's a place where that panel can be inserted and relocated. This will work for our palettes over here as well. You see how I can drag a palette away, and open it up, and I can attach it right next to the property panel if I want to. This pull-down menu at the top has some basic layouts that you can just choose from to get started. And I'm going to pick the designer one for our layout, just because it fits the screen a little bit better. Our tools are up at the top, and our property window, which is very important, has a lot of space to itself. Notice I can set the right-hand panel to either be an expanded set of panels, or a collapsed set of icons. And I think the icons will work really good for this recording. You can also modify the layouts however you want. Let's say I wanted to have the history window showing as well. Well, I can go to the Windows pull-down menu, choose Other Panels, and grab the History menu. It comes out as a floating menu, but I can just grab it by the tab, and I'll dock it right below these other tools, so it's easy to grab a hold of whenever I need it. I find it a great idea to rearrange these tools whenever you need to, just to make sure that your workspace is nice and convenient to use. You can also go up to the Layout drop-down menu, and choose New Workspace to save all of your settings under a new name. I'll just call mine something simple like Main. And now I can reset it back to my main setting whenever I want to. Now that we've got our panel set up, let's make sure we can control the stage itself. We've got a zoom control right here at the top of the stage, and you can pull that down and select from another percentage that will zoom in or out on your stage itself so that you can see more of the outlying area, like this. You can also use the zoom tool up here in the tool palette. It has zoom in and zoom out options, and you can just click or drag around an area in order to zoom in or zoom out. You can also use some quick keyboard shortcuts. I'll use these a lot, so I might as well go over them now. On the Mac, it would be Command Plus, and on the PC, Control Plus. That will give you a zoom in, and a corresponding Command Minus on the Mac, or Control Minus on the PC, will get you a zoom out. The other tool for manipulating the stage is right up here in the tool palette next to the Zoom tool, and that's the Hand tool. When you select this tool, you can just click and move your entire workspace around. 
Now, you're not moving any of the objects in your space, you're just moving the stage itself. There's an easy shortcut you can use for it as well. Let me just switch over to our normal selection tool for a moment. And with any other tool selected, you can press down the space bar and it'll change to the hand tool. While you're holding the space bar down, you can click and move the stage around, and you can let go of the space bar and it'll go back to whatever tool you had before.